Hello everyone, my name is Elisa Baum and I'm Percona's Director of Product Marketing. We will begin in just a moment, but first I'd like to conduct a bit of house cleaning. First, can you please raise your hand using the hand icon located in the GoToWebinar control panel to let me know if you can hear me. And I'm taking a look. Thank you very much, I see a bunch of hands. Next, during this webinar, you will be on mute. Should you have any questions during the discussion, please go ahead and enter them in the questions field within the control panel. At the end of the discussion, we will take time to answer as many questions as possible. Those that we don't get to will be answered in a follow-up blog post on Percona's MySQL performance blog. In addition, I'll make sure that everybody has a recording of this webinar within 48 hours. With that said, I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, What's New in Percona Extra DB Cluster 5.6, presented by Percona Principal Consultant Jay Jensen and guest starring Alexei Yurchenko, who is a solutions architect and Galera expert from Codership. And with that said, I'll turn the floor over to Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Thanks, Lisa. You can hear me okay? You sound great. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, as a lot of you probably know, uh, Procona Extra DB Cluster 5.6 went GA last week, and uh, we timed the webinar, I guess, perfectly to kind of line up with that. Um, so let's jump in. So an overview of what's going on. First and foremost, PXC 5.6 is the aggregation of a variety of open source products um, that are merged into one, uh, one solution. So it's the combination of Procona Server 5.6, which is the uh, open source fork of community MySQL 5.6. Uh, also with that is the Codership MySQL 5.6 patches, which make uh, InnoDB and, and MySQL itself work properly with the Galera replication mechanism. And then there is the Galera 3.x library itself. Um, so there's a lot kind of going on. Um, but for the focus of this talk, I'm going to be looking mostly at the Galera 3 stuff, uh, as well as some of the uh, changes and improvements to the Codership patches. Um, we'll spend a little time talking about some 5.6 features that are uh, useful and interesting in context of PXC, but uh, our focus is not uh, you know, 5.6 in general. So uh, on the agenda then is, is major new features in Galera. Um, we're going to talk a bit about asynchronous replication, asynchronous MySQL replication uh, in combination with PXC 5.6. Um, some 5.6 features that play nicely uh, or don't play nicely with Galera, um, some future features that will be coming down the pike, and then we'll have some time, uh, hopefully at the end, for a lot of your questions. So um, uh, as you can probably hear, I'm going to be doing most of the talking. Uh, I will defer to Alexi if he has any comments um, in, in a few spots to maybe uh, make some clarifications if necessary, uh, and he'll also be able to take questions at the end. Um, before I get too far, though, I wanted to uh, just briefly cover what PXC is. I use PXC, uh, the acronym, so often that I'm I'm just kind of uh, numb to it. I just I just hear it, and that's I assume everybody knows what it is. Um, but just at a very high level, without going into a lot of detail, um, PXC uh, is a it, it's a read and write anywhere in ODB cluster. I really think of it as in ODB specific. Um, certainly, MySQL is the actual um, the actual you know overall daemon but it's really designed to work the best with InnoDB specifically. Um, it has it's highly available with quorum-based failover, so uh, quorum election is used to manage things like uh, split brain failures and so forth. So it's really designed to be very uh, tall, or very resistant to outages um, and node failures and so forth um, by basically state-of-the-art uh, high availability techniques. Um, it, it employs synchronous replication for data consistency. So we're we're talking about you know the idea that if if your client or a, a MySQL client does a commit on a Galera node and, and receives a, a positive reply to that commit, um, that commit is on the cluster. The cluster has it, and and any node failure, including the node failure node that you just committed to, uh, if that fails, um, the, the the commit will be preserved across the cluster. Um, the cluster is responsible for each node's state, meaning um, new nodes that join or rejoin the cluster. The cluster itself is responsible for making sure they're synchronized. Um, and you know it kind of manages a lot of that for you. Um, overall, the PXC product is, is almost two years old now. It went GA a couple of MySQL conferences ago, a couple of Aprils ago. Um, and in the 5.5 series, 
um, there was 13 releases total and over 150,000 downloads off of our site. So there's been a lot of development effort that we've put in on top of all the effort from CodaShip uh, in terms of you know improving uh, the, the testing and so forth, all the all the great testing that we do with Procona Server uh, gets applied as well to PXC, and then of course the combination of, of those two, we have we have done a lot of work in that area. Um, and then finally, it's it, it, there's certainly a lot more detail, but but at least finally on this slide, um, it's really easy to migrate from and integrate with standard MySQL asynchronous replication and the clusters. So a lot of people are really evaluating it for the purposes of a, 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 a next generation high availability solution, but it's definitely so much more than that. So with that being said, um, and, and hopefully people have kind of a, a context a little bit about what PXD, if you, if you hadn't had it before, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the new features. So in Galera, there's been a lot of replication enhancements um, in the 3.x Galera release compared with uh, the 5.5 the PXD series ran Galera 2. Um, First and foremost, uh, one of the things that's really been improved is the replication overhead for something called keys. Now, Galera replicates something called write sets, and you can think of write sets as a transaction, and those write sets effectively have two pieces. One is um, row-based replication. So Galera leverages the row-based replication format that MySQL can emit, and um, it uh, so it just uses that as a payload, but it also incorporates something called keys on top of that. Now, keys are effectively just a list of schemas, tables, primary keys, unique keys, foreign keys of the rows that are being modified in that specific write set. So um, for Galera replication to work properly, uh, keys have to be replicated as well as the actual RBR payload. So um, one of the major things that has changed uh, is the overhead for these keys. So just as a really simple test, I did a 250,000 row insert into a sysbench um, prepare command, which is you know just a, a very straightforward and simple uh, MySQL benchmarking tool. And I and I calculated how much uh, how many bytes were replicated or how many megabytes were replicated comparing Glare 2 and Glare 3. Um, and we can see that the the robust replication doesn't change, but we see a a fairly, a fairly significant difference in the size of the keys between the two versions. Um, quite a significant improvement there. And so certainly you can imagine that um, in making big improvements over the course of a, a much larger workload. Now, uh, the main difference in why this, over, this overhead has been reduced so much is that the keys are now hashed. Um, in prior versions to Galera 3, keys were just simply set as the literal values, whatever they happen to be. So um, it actually mattered what the key was. Uh, if the key was an integer versus a, a, a large character string, there could be a significant difference. So if we look at the graph here at the bottom, we can see there the G2 and G3 are Galera 2 and 3. Um, in Galera 2, comparing a primary key on a table that, that where the primary key is an integer versus where the primary key is a CAR 128 field, um, and otherwise the rows are the same size, uh, we can see quite a big difference in the size of the keys associated with that. This is a single insert statement, a single write set, a uh, single transaction. So, so we can see obviously a very big difference, right? The CAR 128 really bloats out the size of the transaction. Now, when we go over to Galera 3, it actually doesn't matter what the primary key is. You'll get the same results in both cases, um, and we get uh, either 47 uh, bytes for the keys or 71, depending on uh, this flat 8 versus flat 16. This is a configuration item for the hash. Um, so flat 8 is an 8-byte key, and flat 16 is a 16-byte key. Now, note it, you might, if you're paying attention, close attention, you'll notice that um, if, if I have a 4-byte integer as a primary key, and I hash that, and it becomes an 8-byte integer, why would the keys be smaller in Galera 3 with flat 8? Well, the reason is, is that the primary key is not the only thing being sent here. Um, in addition, in this specific case, we have the primary key, but we also have the name of the schema and the table. And so those character strings, which were previously sent as literals, are now also being hashed. And so there's really actually a net gain, uh, even though we may be you know, hashing a 4-byte integer into it, something that's 8 bytes. Um, so 
again, we can kind of see that there's there's some improvements, and there's really not as not going to be the fluctuation that there was in Galera 2, you know, depending on what keys were uh, being sent. So if the primary key was larger, you have this big variation. In Galera 3, that effectively goes away, and things are a lot more consistent. So that leads into, uh, pretty simply, um, improved memory usage. So uh, these keys are used in something called the certification index inside of uh, the Galera library, you know, it allocates memory as it needs them. Um, and I'm replicating some really large transactions here. And um, so we can kind of compare Galera 2 and Galera 3 and see kind of a, a big difference. So um, uh, when I started my SQL in all these cases, I'm using uh, in Percona server, there's a feature called InnoDB buffer pool populate, which simply pre-allocates the memory needed for the buffer pool. So we wouldn't see variation there. Um, but we can see that, you know, the WSREP provider none, no Galera. Uh, it stays about the same, but we would expect after I load all this data. Uh, in Galera 2, we see a very large increase. Um, and then in Galera 3, we see a much more modest increase. Uh, and that is due to that certification index. So in overall, in Galera uh, replication, um, the write sets have a new format. You know, this leads to uh, faster certification because it's a lot of times easier to compare, you know, straight 8-byte um, key than it is, you know, some large character string. Uh, it uses less memory. Um, it incorporates checksums into the write sets. And uh, as we already talked about, the write set keys are now being hashed in either the flat 8 or flat 16. Uh, the default is flat 8, for those who are wondering. Um, there's also socket checksums at the networking layer uh, that have been improved to use a CRC32-C uh, algorithm. This is simply uh, uh, an algorithm that you will allow hardware acceleration where supported. Um, this particular setting is not backward compatible with Valera 2. So um, that's kind of an overview of just sort of the, the really low-level Galera replication. Um, Alexi, did you have anything you wanted to maybe correct or, or chime in on? Uh, nothing. I think it's all correct. <laughs> all I, always like to have, <laughs> I, always, I always like to have you fact-checking fact me as I talk, Alexi. So I'm glad you're here. All right. So uh, let's jump into a, another feature, a really interesting feature of Galera 3, and that would be WAN segments. So um, if we have a cluster that spans multiple data centers, uh, so in this picture I have three data centers with a couple of nodes in each data center, then um, Galera, uh, Galera 2 particularly, um, and, and earlier, was perfectly fine with this arrangement, but it treats all nodes in this case equally. So when I do replication in this case, um, I, if I connect uh, to, you know, I'm connecting to one node, this node, for example, in the lower left-hand corner, um, and I do a commit, that commit is going to be replicated from that node to all the other nodes in the cluster, irregardless of where they're located, because Galera simply just doesn't know about them. Um, and so uh, you can imagine then if you're paying for the bandwidth between uh, data center two and the other data centers that this is, you know, we're actually kind of expensive and certainly if there's more nodes here, this is just going to multiply the amount of bandwidth that you need. So uh, to rectify this in Galera 3, uh, this idea of cluster segments was introduced. So the idea is that we set a, a specific setting. This is something in the WS rep provider options for those who are already familiar with PXD. Um, we set this GMCAS segment uh, to a distinct value for each location. So, for example, all nodes in COLA 1 may have um, a GMCAS segment of 1, all nodes in COLA 2 have a GMS, GMCAS segment of 2, and so forth. So the benefits of this are twofold, and I'll illustrate these more clearly on the next couple of slides. But uh, number one, replication traffic is minimized between the segments. And number two, donor selection will prefer a local segment. So let's talk about the replication differences here then. Remember before, our, the, the node that was doing the commit, we sometimes call this a master node, um, it would replicate to all of the other nodes, copy that full write set to all the nodes, um, and then uh, you know, wait for a response from them. With segments in play, then what will happen, that will still happen to all other nodes in the cluster that are on the same segment, so in this case segment two, um, but it will also copy the replication to a uh, one of the nodes in all of the other segments that exist. So in this case, uh, 
because we have two other data centers, we are still sending two copies of our transaction um, across the LAN, to eat one, one to each of the data centers, but this is much more efficient than, uh, of course, sending it to, a copy to each one in turn. Now, um, astute people will probably realize that, okay, this is adding a little bit more latency because, of course, then the replication has to relay in each data center um, from that one node to all the other nodes, and there's an extra hop involved. But in my testing, I uh, really the, the WAN late, common WAN latencies that we would be talking about really dwarf any additional overhead of that extra hop locally on, in, in each of these LANs. Um, so, so really, the, the latency addition here is, is theoretical, yes, but minimal and, and really not noticeable relative to you know, WANs that are tens or, or, or hundreds of milliseconds apart. Um, additionally, uh, you know, so these, are, these nodes are acting as relays uh, for the replication. Um, you don't have to configure these relays. Galera handles this for you. So for each transaction that happens, um, Galera decides which nodes to use as a relay and which nodes are, you know, will not be used. And, and that can actually vary between transactions. Um, and if that node happens to fail, Galera is the one that has to worry about uh, changing to another node to use for a relay. So there's nothing you have to configure here, nothing else you have to worry about in terms of you know, failover and if, oh, if the relay fails, we have to go reconfigure it. Um, it's all handled transparently as long as you provide the proper segment configuration for all of the nodes. Um, also, I, one last thing I would add here is that this is still synchronous uh, to all the nodes. So even though we are relaying to one node in the remote data centers, the acknowledgement of the transaction still must be received uh, by from all of the nodes before the, com the client commit can be returned successfully. So, so this is not any kind of you know asynchronous uh, uh, relaying or anything like that. This is still fully synchronous. So I also mentioned that donor selection um, is improved with segments, and it's pretty much the way you would expect it to be. Uh, if I have a node that's joining the cluster and it happens to be configured in segment three and, and it is in, of course in data center three then when it joins, uh, it will be looking for a donor, and the donor selection will be made based on the segments. And you can actually see this as a message in the error log when the, when the, the node starts. Um, but it will prefer to find one of the local nodes to get a donation from, whether it's SST or IST. If there are no matching uh, nodes in that segment that are available, then uh, it will, f of course, fall back to any of the other nodes across the WAN. But certainly, uh, with respect to uh, WAN clusters and, and having you know, any kind of large size data directories, um, and of course the slow copy sometimes of, of data over the WAN, this is a huge improvement uh, over just sort of picking a crapshoot and maybe getting a WAN copy during SST. Right? So moving on into asynchronous replication. Um, so asynchronous replication. Uh, into the cluster specifically. So, so for those, again, who maybe aren't familiar with this, any node in a PXC cluster can be a slave of some other MySQL node. Uh, so you know, standard replication inbound into the cluster is perfectly viable. Um, you, ha you have one node that acts as the slave of whatever other master, and then that node, as uh, transactions come in from replication, it then in turn will pass it on to the other nodes uh, using a familiar mechanism for a lot of people, log slave updates. So um, in previous versions of Galera, um, uh, the, the asynchronous thread, the thread that runs on node two and applies the, the replication from the async master behaves much like any other connection to, this, to the cluster. Uh, and, and that's like this. Um, our async uh, thread on our slave node uh, it will receive, you know, this transaction, start, begin applying it, so it's running either, you know, if it's, if it's uh, same as the same as base replication DML or applying the RBR changes, and then it's going to issue a commit request to the local node. So in Galera, a commit request um, will go and replicate that write set out to the entire cluster um, with all the latencies associated with that. When that completes successfully, then on the local node, uh, that transaction will be certified, and if the certification passes, the commit will finalize, and then the async thread can go on to the next step. 
Now notice the amount of time that that takes uh, from that begin all the way down to that commit. That's a single transaction. And because MySQL asynchronous replication is single threaded, uh, this means that we can basically, every single transaction has to go through that whole cycle one at a time. Now, uh, I, I would take a quick aside here and say, um, node two and three, the certification uh, and uh, apply and commit, that's actually asynchronous in Galera. Um, and many people don't realize that, and, and I usually have to explain it um, from the beginning. But effectively, the certification process is deterministic on all the nodes. It, always will, it should always be the same, get the same result on all three nodes, either pass or fail. And if it passes, then it will go and apply in the background. Um, certification and also uh, the mechanism of brute force aborts is what prevents conflicts to our, our, our transaction that first committed from, say, somebody writing on another node. So uh, I, I'm not going to say any more about it on that now. I'm sure I'll get questions on it. Um, but just know that you know for asynchronous replication coming in, um, there definitely can be slowdowns. And it's not so much the cluster's fault. It's really the nature of, of the asynchronous replication threat. I have seen this on uh, very high volume uh, master that was they were trying to migrate to a, a, a cluster. They tried to replicate into it, and replication just simply could not keep up because of all of these extra steps per transaction. So with Golera 3, uh, it introduces a setting called WSREP preordered. Um, you have to turn it on. It's actually off by default. But it, it treats the inbound uh, transactions from asynchronous replication um, a little bit differently than before. Um, instead of going through and treating it just like any other client connection coming in, instead it essentially takes that transaction and immediately injects it into Galera. So it, it's sending it right down to the replication layer and, and letting everybody sort of deal with it in that uh, asynchronous background apply mode, even the slave node itself. So the amount of time that is necessary for each transaction to be applied uh, shrinks dramatically in this case. The, the replication is the only thing we really have to wait for. Um, now I notice that there is still certification uh, in this, but it's actually not certification the same way that we think about it in other cases. Um, transactions that come in via this method, we're not able to, uh, Galera is not able to get the key in this specific case. So really it's sort of a blind uh, replication event, just sort of sending out the payload without really knowing any keys. And in that case, um, you really can't do certification. Uh, and that has implications I'll talk about on the next slide. So when would we use this? Um, WSREP pre-ordered pre on, obviously the goal here is better performance, but it really doesn't allow for conflicts with any other rights. Um, in, in the, with pre-ordered off, uh, our slave had had the opportunity to actually generate an error if there's some conflict generated by the cluster. But in pre-ordered on, the, the thread has no way of knowing that there was an error. So um, in addition to, and that's because there's no key. Um, additionally, there's no parallel apply for these transactions for the exact same reason. Both certification in Galera and parallel apply in Galera uh, depend very heavily on having the keys set properly in the right sets. So this is good for master-slave to cluster migrations um, is one case where I think it would be a logical place to set this up. You're, you're still writing on your old production master and the cluster right now is just a slave. You're not writing directly to it in any other way except this replication. Um, it might be good in some other certain cases, but realize that it, it, you want to be sure that those are cases where there weren't, where there's guaranteed to be no other co conflicts. Um, now, WSREP pre-ordered equals off is the default, and that's because it's the safest option. Um, it will correctly de detect any conflicts if there's writes coming in from replication and writes coming in on, uh, also directly to the cluster. It allows for the parallel apply. Um, and it's, I would say that's probably the better place to start off with uh, if you are intending to some kind of architecture that has a permanent cluster as a slave type setup. So that, all of that is all about replicating into the cluster. Um, now what about out of the cluster? So uh, just like any node in uh, a cluster can be a slave, it can also be a master. So in this case, we have node three configured as a master to our asynchronous slave that, you know, it doesn't even have to run cluster. It can run, you know, whatever version of MySQL. Well, it should be 5.6, but it uh, could be community, whatever. Um, every node, uh, you know, so, so this node is, is using log bin 
also log slave updates, and it's creating its own binary logs based on all of the transactions coming from the rest of the cluster. So in 5.6 uh, community, uh, one of the big things that, that everybody's been talking about is the GTID uh, replication for, for MySQL asynchronous replication. And so uh, 5.6 and Galera 3 and, and all the new changes uh, incorporates a GTID integration. Um, and, and what that functionally means is that if I have a slave and of node 3 in this example, and node 3 fails, and I would like to you know, very quickly and easily change the master of that async slave to some other node in the cluster, as long as that other node has already been logging, um, then it's as simple as change master to the ma new master host name, master auto position 1, and then start slave and you're done. So the GTIDs will be synchronized across the cluster in all of the binary logs. Now, earlier in 5.5, um, before this integration existed, uh, you could certainly run multiple nodes with bin logging, but there was no guarantee that the bin logs would be the same size. So you couldn't really guarantee that there would be, you would be at the same bin log file or the same position or anything like that. There was a very um, kind of dirty way to go figure out exactly uh, where to change to if you had to fail it over before, but it involved kind of crawling through relay logs and, and doing some sort of dirty things like that. This was a lot cleaner. So that's one of the big wins with replication out of the cluster in 5.6. Now to talk about some just general 5.6 improvements, um, you know, what about, I get these kind of questions a lot, you know, can I use XYZ feature in 5.6 or just in MySQL um, in PXE? Um, you know, will it work? You know, will InnoDB full text indexes work? And, and generally the answer is yes. Um, any, anything in MySQL uh, will work fine on the cluster uh, within the context of a single node. So what do I mean by that? Let's take full text indexes. Full text indexes are not replicated. Um, you replicate the data in a full text uh, or in a table that may have a full text index for InnoDB. Um, and Galera, of course, does that perfectly fine. Uh, and each node maintains their own index. So, yeah, they work fine with PXE. Partitioning improvements, optimizer improvements, performance scheme improvements, no big deal. But that being said, don't expect that just because there's a new 5.6 feature, say, for example, online DDL, DDL improvements for InnoDB, don't expect that that means that the cluster automatically supports online DDL. Um, there are still restrictions on DDL uh, across the cluster. And um, while online DDL in 5.6 will apply to each node separately um, and may go faster on each node separately, uh, there's still cluster-wide restrictions that are in place as a result of that. So again, online DDL actually falls under the first rule. It does work fine in the context of a single node, but you also have to understand how the overall cluster works to make sure you understand it properly. Um, another note I'd just throw in here, um, one of the more sort of, a little bit more of an edge feature maybe in 5.6 community was the addition of the memcache server API for InnoDB tables. And so the idea is you have a, you have a, a port that will t talk directly to an InnoDB table or, or some tables and um, you're able to use memcache API calls to, to work with the data. Um, unfortunately, this does work within the context of a single node, but um, the data written to such a table does not replicate. And I filed this bug uh, with respect to that. Um, it's something to do with how the, that was implemented. I think it's pretty low level in NODB. They tied this in. Um, and I'm, it's not clear to me um, you know, how easily that may or may not be fixed. But if that worked right, you could imagine actually having a cluster of basically durable memcache servers, which would be pretty slick. Um, but Alas, it is not to be. This is the only real feature that I know of that is just downright broken um, in 5.6. Everything else, as far as I know, works pretty much as advertised. Another 5.6 feature, um, it has to do with the row-based replication. And because Galera relies on row-based replication, um, we can apply it to PXE as well. So before, prior to, to 5.6, row-based replication was exclusively um, every row that was changing you're sending over a full copy of that row. So even if you're going and modifying one column out of 100, it's still going to go send the entire row down to the slave. And that, of course, applied to PXE as well. Now, 5.6 adds a, a, an optional feature, bin log row image equals minimal, which is not default, um, but you can set it. 
And this actually works great with PXE. Um, the role-based replication image, as I think I mentioned before, is, is, is really black box to Galera. Galera does not rely on the RBR format or anything like that. It just, it's just responsible for transporting it uh, around to all the nodes and then ultimately applying it. Um, and it's up to MySQL for that to work right. So uh, this can actually have a really huge impact, depending on your workload, of the bandwidth you need for replication. So this test, um, I, I took out of one of my old, a blog posts I did a couple months ago, um, but basically a really quick and dirty one minute suspense update test where one column was being modified out of three in a row. Um, I saw a really significant difference in the amount of data that needed to be replicated. So with the default bin log row image of full, I had 62 megabytes and with minimal it went all the way down to 13. So imagine that this plus, say, a WAN cluster would really reduce the amount of bandwidth needed to, um, to keep the cluster running properly and could be a huge win for people, especially who are paying for a lot of their bandwidth across data center. So let's tackle upgrading. Upgrading 5.5 to 5.6. Um, there's two ways. And the first one is the easy way. <laughs> um, the first way to upgrade to 5.6 is kind of the obvious way. Shut everything down, upgrade everything to 5.6, bring it all back up. Um, and so there's, this is sort of a rough procedure. Um, we want to be careful of, of my.cnf settings that are just no longer 5.6 compatible. Mostly these are, you know, there's things that were deprecated and so forth that just don't work in a 5.6 instance that you have to figure all those out. Um, we would generally, you know, shut the whole cluster down, start up each node with WSR provider equals none, which prevents it from connecting to anybody else and trying to form a cluster. We run MySQL upgrades so that we can upgrade the, you know, the, the table spaces and, and, all, and the tables and all that sort of thing, the MySQL system tables. We shut it down again. We do that on all the nodes. And then we just go around and bootstrap the cluster normally. Boot up, you know, bootstrap one node join up the other nodes, join it, and, and boom, we're on 5.6. That's very simple, but of course it takes a lot of downtime to do it. The not so easy way is the rolling upgrade method. Now, the reason why this is not so easy is simply because role-based replication from 5.6 to 5.5 is broken. Uh, and this is not TXE's fault or Percona, this is community MySQL. Uh, in general, replication from a newer master, a newer major version master, to a an older uh, major version slave, so say 5.6 to 5.5, is generally not supported. The manual says this in multiple places. Now, practically speaking, uh, it you know it tends to work, but in the 5.6 case, there are certain things where it just doesn't, and one of those has to do with the new date time formats where there are microseconds and things like and things like that. Um, you know, replicating that, a full precision uh, timestamp like that from 5.6 to 5.5, 5.5 just doesn't know what to do with it. So um, that's really sort of the root reason behind all of this. And because of that, we have sort of a, a, a not the smoothest rolling upgrade process that I would like to see, but it is what it is. Um, so for the way that we would upgrade in this case is for each 5.6, uh, for each node we're, we're going through, we're upgrading to 5.6, um, we need to make sure that there are compatibility options with 5.5. Uh, and there, the, the bit.ly link at the bottom of this links to the PXC 5.6 manual, which has a, a, a better description of all of those. Um, this includes Galera, Socket, Checks, and Equal 1, uh, but there's some other MySQL ones in general, too, making sure that the RBR events are in proper 5.5 format. But even in that case, they're still, it's still broken uh, for if you try to replicate from 5.6 to 5.5. So, once we have a 5.6 node in the cluster, A, well, I probably should have put this first. We don't write to that node. We can't. Because if we write to that node um, and there happens to be things that are not compatible um, from 5.6 to 5.5, then you've run the risk of crashing all of the remaining other 5.5 nodes uh, with RBR errors. Um, we don't also, we, don't, we want to ensure we don't SST a 5.5 node to a 5.6 node because SST does not go through in MySQL upgrade step. So we need to take steps to ensure that doesn't happen. Um, so we go around our cluster in a rolling fashion, and we do these steps. We upgrade one node at a time to 5.6 and make it either read-only or however you need to take it out of application rotation, make sure it has these compatibility options, make sure we don't SST. And then when, at some point, whether we get to the last node or maybe there's two nodes left, depending on how many nodes you have in your cluster, we're going to just flip the switch. 
So the application, instead of writing to it, only writing to the five five nodes, will then just suddenly you flip a switch and they start writing to the five six nodes, and then at that instant you take down the remaining five five node or nodes for and do the upgrade on those and then bring them back in. After that's all done, then you would go through and doing a standard rolling restart to remove the five five compatible compatibility options. So there's a lot more detail on this uh, in the manual, as I said. That's the link to it at the bottom. Um, I, I don't, you know, have time here to go through all the the nuts and bolts. But this is a little bit more convoluted than I would like, and it really just comes down to, um, you know, a long-standing assumption that you never would need to to replicate from uh, an, a newer master to an older slave. Let's talk about a few more odds and ends. We're, we're getting close to the end. Um, so my favorite bug fixes. Um, there's a, a variety of bugs and things that have been fixed in Galera 3 and, and, and recent versions. So uh, I just like to call out a few of these now that I'm, I'm happy to see. Um, uh, there was a sort of a nasty bug in the past about if you added a uh, did an alter table and added an incre auto increment column to an existing table that didn't have one, um, it would cause inconsistency, and that has been fixed and addressed. Um, this was due to auto increment control, which of course will set a different auto increment offset and increment on every node. And so an alter table will, of course, create different auto increments on each each row in the same table when it gets applied to all the nodes. So this has been fixed. Um, WSREP local BF aborts, this is brute force aborts, uh, catches all of the brute force aborts now, which is great. Um, there was some before that it would miss, and so you wouldn't necessarily see a counter of all of them. Um, WSREP flow control sent and received flow control variables are now global counters um, instead of being reset to zero whenever show global status was run. Uh, this makes it much easier to see historical trending of flow control uh, and what's going on in your cl cluster, which is very important. Um, and then max, uh, WSREP max WS size, right set size, and rows. Uh, I wouldn't say, uh, I spoke with Alexi about this, I wouldn't say that these are properly enforced now, but they are moving in that direction. Um, so one of the things I would caution people about moving to 5.6 is if you do have large transactions uh, on your cluster, um, it might have been the case in 5.5 that you know these settings were just simply ignored. Uh, I think that's basically what they were. Um, and you might find in 5.6 that suddenly it's catching it, at least in some way. Um, it's, it's not quite perfect yet. There's a few open bugs. So those are some of my favorite fixes. And let's jump over to the, some future features. Galera 3 was really a, a, an attempt by Codership, and I'm just speaking on what they've told me, and Alexi can clarify, but it was an attempt by Codership to really start preparing to solve some of these larger problems in the cluster. Um, and so while the you know, lower level replication enhancements, you know, they're not, they're, the, the data sizing and some of that stuff is, is really good, um, there's a lot more changes, I think, under the hood that we just don't really see. Uh, and it's not you know, necessarily something that you can really put a bullet point to and, and really talk about in a lot of detail without really understanding the nuts and bolts. But it's really trying to set up to solve some of these larger problems and some of these future features. So these features are not in the current release of Galera 3.3 and, and TXC 5.6, um, but they are things that Codership is planning on and, and, and moving forward in. Um, number one is uh, automatic huge transaction or large transaction fragmentation slash streaming. So people who have been using PXC know that um, large transactions can be problematic. Um, in the cluster, uh, just with respect to how the replication works, and, and one of the proposed features for the future is a way to break those up automatically and, and chunk them in some way to be able to inter to interleave other replication with large transactions and not cause cluster stalls. Um, similarly, with DDL, DDL is is, is actually by default. Um, if you use the default method and just run an, an alter table statement on the cluster, that, that has to isolate the entire cluster and, and do the DDL at the same time on all the nodes. And even if that you're not writing to those, that table being modified, the Galera replication still has to stop because it's a global stream of, data, of replication. So improving that in the future would be awesome. Um, other things that are, that are pretty interesting, um, actually having the cluster be able to be tolerant to a certain amount of inconsistencies. Right now, if a, a node detects an inconsistency, it just aborts. Um, but there's an open bug or a feature request to uh, make that maybe a little more configurable and something that we can monitor. So if consistencies are detected, they can be uh, logged and, and counted. Um, and then maybe after a certain, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to crash a node. Um, addition, additionally, intelligent inconsistency handling. So 
the idea is if uh, an inconsistency happens and it happens on all the nodes in the cluster except for one, then they should not be the ones that crash. They sh we should tell the other node that he's wrong. Um, and so the nodes can actually figure that out themselves. Intelligent donor selection. So with respect to um, the Gcash and IST, um, IST only works if the, all the transactions needed are in the donor's Gcash, but right now it's not being checked for. So hey, what if the what if uh, the PXE nodes could actually know if it find a good donor to do an IST? Um, and other performance optimizations, uh, for, like say multi-core and so forth. Um, and then something called multiple provider support. Um, I'm going to let Alexi talk about that, and then maybe anything else she wants to add or clarify on this list. Alexi? Uh, <clears throat> right. Well, uh, I'm not sure that uh, I would rather answer some concrete questions than uh, I'm not sure what to add to this list, really, at this um, point. Well, can Except you... Can Briefly mention the, the what the multiple provider support is all about. Well, multiple provider support is the ability of a node to load several instances of um, replication provider and be a part of several clusters. Uh, for example, this was um, I think it's kind of a niche use case, but uh, came up many times in the past that people want uh, some sort of multi-source uh, replication, you know, star-like topology where you have uh, many masters which replicate mm -hmm. to the same uh, slave um, like that. Mm -hmm. And um, also there have been a lot of requests for uh, replication filtering, which uh, is also uh, in in uh, in Galera terms, it will be it will have to be uh, uh, implemented in the form of uh, multiple clusters. Say okay. some data, some tables belong to one cluster, and modifications to these tables replicate within certain set of nodes and modifications to other tables get replicated to other nodes, or not replicated at all, for example. A lot of people uh, are asking about how can we not replicate something. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, this, actually, this, this will uh, require some <laughs> serious uh, uh, adjustments to MySQL. Uh, right now, everything is very simple because uh, since Every node is a copy of each of, of the cluster. When a node joins the cluster, it's very easy to make a state transfer. Just copy all data over. Right. When you will have uh, several clusters and several providers, it, this, this, this is probably the biggest problem that we will need to solve is how to initialize the node um, to the cluster state. Particularly um, a full state, full SST, right? Was the, yes, we'll need to do. Uh, yes, full SST is a problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of uh, this is something in the future. I yeah. see that um, non-blocking DDLs and intelligent donor selection are one of the top problems right now, and these are probably in. Uh, the lowest hanging fruit. So this this is probably what we will ad address uh, right away, and perhaps uh, within a few months. So it, it I would say that it will be uh, introduced in Galera three. Uh, mm -hmm. And as of for performance optimizations, uh, this will be will have to be delayed to Galera four because they require serious code cleaning and uh, dropping support for both uh, right set formats, for example. Thanks a lot, Alexi. Now I'm going to get all these questions about when Galera 4 is going to come out. <laughs> we, just, we just got past 5.6 and Galera 3, so OK. <laughs> all right, so um, with that, um, I think actually we're ready to turn it over for questions. Um, but before we did that, I just want to highlight that uh, the Procono Live uh, 
we call it affectionately TLMTE, uh, is coming up in April. Um, I will be doing a marathon six-hour tutorial on PXC. Um, and I think, Alexa, you're speaking as well. Is that right? You're already on mute again. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not exactly speaking, but I will be present, and okay. I will definitely so, be present at your tutorial. So, so there's definitely going to be a, a high uh, concentration of, of Galera and PXC folks uh, at the conference, so this is absolutely a good, a good way to go find out more, or uh, the tutorial that I lead really has to do with really getting up to speed, kind of working through some of, sort of just some operational things about understanding the cluster and so forth. So uh, with that, I guess we will open it up for questions, Alisa. Hi, Jay and Alexi. Thank you so much. There are a lot of questions, so we will take as many as we can in the time remaining. And anything that is not answered, Jay will do a follow-up blog post on Percona's MySQL performance blog. A lot of questions are about slides and webinar recording. I will make sure that everybody here gets a link to both. Um, within 48 hours after I'm done processing the recording. So yes, you will get the slides and the recording. All right, Jay, so with that said, let me go ahead and start ans asking the questions that we have here. All right, um, what's the difference between SST and IST? All right, so, so both are state transfers, and that's the ST part. Um, when a node joins a Galera cluster, it will be in one of two states. Either it will be a brand new node with an empty data directory effectively, or at least no prior known Galera state. And in that case, when it joins a, an existing cluster, the existing cluster is responsible for making sure that that new node has a full copy of all the data. Every node in, in the cluster has all the data. Um, there's no sharding or anything like that. So what uh, PXE simply does um, is do a backup of one node and copies that to the new node. Now that backup can take many forms. Um, there's an rsync, there's a MySQL dump, but primarily what people are using in production is extra backup. Um, and that is, of course, another Pocona open source uh, backup product. The idea, big idea here is that we are um, backing up uh, a, an existing donor node in the cluster, streaming that over to the new node. Um, that stream can be encrypted, it, could be com it can be com compressed, et cetera, um, it, but it does it as online as it can and, and gives it to the new node, and then the new node joins the cluster. An IST is when a node already was part of the cluster and just has been shut down for a sh usually a short period of time. So if we need to do a rolling restart, for example, for config changes or upgrades, then the goal would be when we restart the node, we do an incremental state transfer. And this, instead of obviously needing a full backup, it's only uh, the donor node will feed the joiner node all of the transactions that it missed. And the way that the donor does this is with its Gcache. The Gcache is a memory segment that stores recent transactions, and that is used to basically stream directly to the new joiner, and then the joiner replies, and then it catches up with the cluster. So that's the difference between IST and SST. Thank you for a great answer. So I might as well just ask this one because it's kind of a follow-up because it's about Percona Extra Backup. Um, I read on your blog that Percona Extra DB cluster uses Percona Extra Backup for replication activities. How does it? How does Extra Backup Percona Extra Backup? Um, or sorry, how does Percona Extra DB cluster use Percona Extra Backup? And what are the benefits of our other options like R Sync? Sure. So, so uh, just a point of clarification on the question, the, it, it's not used for replication, it's used for these state transfers. The actual replication, once a node is up and connected, is gone through, that goes through Galera. Um, but when we are doing a full state snap, snapshot transfer, ExtraDB cluster has the big advantage over the other methods because it is not blocking on the node that is the donor, with a little bit of an asterisk at the end of that. So extra backup is an ODB hot backup tool, and since extra DB cluster is an InnoDB cluster, then we can back up the majority of the interesting data off of the donor node without having to lock the whole node and prevent anybody from actually being able to use it. Um, the exception to this is at the end of the transfer, at the end of the backup, a flush tables with relock is taken on the donor, and that is to copy um, any rogue MyISAN tables, any um, is to get a consistent snapshot of all the uh, uh, schemas of all the tables, and it's also to get the Galera 
GTID from the moment of the backup. Um, that's a brief lock. It's usually acceptable for most folks, but some people do decide to take things out of rotation. Now, other backup methods like, say, for example, rsync, that can be actually quite a bit faster in many cases because you're just effectively telling the node to stop writing. It won't be able to, you won't be able to write to it um, on the, if, if a client connects to it. And it will just copy the files as quick as it can from um, the donor to the joiner. So it can be quicker, but it's going to be more locking. And generally, that's the difference between the methods. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Next question. Um, with segment replication, didn't you change the replication for parallel into serial in favor for reduced network traffic? Well, the okay. So, so the, the replication being parallel or serial is kind of a loaded way to look at it. Um, realize that the replication is not um, – the replication aspect of that diagram is merely the delivery of the right set to the nodes. So yes, in many ways, um, the, the fact that I'm copying it to one node in the remote data center and then that node is forwarding it to all the other nodes does add a degree of serialization. However, um, the, the thing that is sending the transaction from the original node is actually copying it out to all the nodes kind of serially. Um, Alexi maybe could speak a little bit more exactly, but I think in general we're just talking about network, tr we're talking about dis distribution and not about the applying. So it's not the case in a relay, in a segmented Galera cluster, that the node that is the relay node has to apply the transaction before it can forward it. Not at all. And that is something that is very distinct about how Galera replication works versus uh, relay uh, nodes in standard asynchronous replication. OK, great. Um, the next question. Well, well maybe I can. Oh, uh, sorry. Go ahead, Alexi. Go ahead, Alexi. You had you have something to add to that? Uh, uh, maybe I can add to that that um, I think that's uh, serialization, uh, the bad serialization that you might be thinking about is that uh, you replicate uh, one uh, uh, event at a time. And uh, this is not happening. Galera is uh, a streaming uh, replication and um, so it replicates uh, many events uh, without, um, let's say, it, uh, asynchronously with respect to mm -hmm. each other. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, uh, yes, uh, it's, it's not really um, uh, serializes on uh, replication or applying. So the um, node that, uh, that is the originator of an event, it will send it to everybody and it's not going to everybody it wants it to send, say to each segment once, and then it will start sending another event. And uh, without waiting until uh, something happens, uh, uh, in other segments. It's not going to wait for other nodes to um, uh, to relay those events. It will just keep on sending events. So it, uh, from from replication point of view there is uh, uh, very little difference. It may be even faster for one node to send. If you have like 10 segments and 10 nodes in each segment well, it's hypothetical, but it will be probably faster for to send uh, one event to each segment and then get it um, sent out within that segment, relayed by a dedicated um, dedicated relay node, rather than try to send uh, an event to each of the 100 nodes. Right. Uh, I hope I, I was clear enough. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're clear to me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it comes up in the questions for the blog post. Okay. Next question. WS rep 
pre-ordered smells like Genie DB. Do you have any comments about that? Um, no, I don't. I, I don't. I'm not familiar with Genie DB, so I, I can't. I guess comment really on what that is and how it would relate. Well, maybe I have a comment. I don't. I'm not familiar with Genie DB uh, as well, at least to that extent. But I think that um, it doesn't smell like GDP. It smells like uh, um, it smells like a regular uh, asynchronous master-slave relay uh, functionality that you can find in uh, uh, in standard uh, MySQL replication when the node is just a relay node for replication events. This is this is the closest thing to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. All right, next question is: Has the minimal row image format any drawbacks? Um, so it's new, and you know, I think you know, and obviously the default is not to use it. So I think there's a certain weight to say, well, uh, you know, in any new feature, in in like say a major MySQL version. It's always good to sort of try to understand the potential impacts. Um, you know, treat it with a certain degree of caution. Um, I, I'm not aware that there is any specific issues. I mean, the the RBR is truly a black box from Glare's perspective. So as long as there's no, you know, particular bugs with MySQL itself with sending and receiving minimal RBR uh, images, then it should be fine. Uh, at least as far as you know, Galera is concerned. So that that should be the case. But of course, we know in the real world there there might be some particular issues. Um, I'm not aware of any. Alexi, are you aware of? I, I don't think there's any open bugs or anything regarding this that you're aware of. I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, next question. Given the expansion of the features for clustering within Percona and that the MySQL standard drivers are behind, is there any updates for better client driver support, i.e. cluster-aware drivers that know multiple masters exist, rather it's lo locale or data center? Right. So, the yeah, and I think that's one of the things I, questions I get a lot about the clusters. Well, how does it manage the application connections? And the short answer is it doesn't. Um, the it's responsible for managing itself, and, and frankly, I, I feel like that's enough for Galera to worry about. Like, well, make sure that there is a cluster, if it's possible to have one. Make sure that split brain is handled properly. Make sure that replication is efficient, you know, and fast, and those sorts of things. And we'll worry about the client to server connection um, at a different, with, with something different. Um, now, what that something different ends up being is just depends on how you're intending to use the cluster. Sometimes a simple TCP load balancer is enough, HA proxy or hardware based. Um, sometimes you know you don't really need the load balancing, you just want to have the redundancy and so VIP management is enough. Um, and so forth. You can use people ID or pacemaker and things like this. Um, there are, you know, depending on the client language, there are variety of clients out there. I'm thinking of, you know, Connector J. I'm thinking of um, some of the PHP or PHP MySQL drivers that are starting to become a little bit more sophisticated in terms of high availability. Um, and I think that with those, particularly those that are configurable properly, it's conceivable that they could be configured in a way that would properly monitor each node um, with respect to its membership in the cluster or not. And properly, you know, like this is one of the big keys to this is making sure that you're not just connecting to any old node, you've got to make sure that the node is up. Um, when you've got a centralized load balancer, that's, you know, that's, then you, you just make your centralized load balancer do the polling. It pulls the status on the nodes and takes nodes in and out. When you've got high availability responsible for all of the applications, uh, and all of the application servers have to do it, then they've all got to go pull or do something. Um, and the failover becomes a lot less atomic. The state of a node with respect to the applications becomes much less easily defined. And so HA, you know, between MySQL and 
you know the clients is a is a an area that has a lot of different solutions, and um, you know PXE's you know core functionality is doesn't address those because there are so many different ways to slice it. That's kind of my take on it. Um, I am actually doing um, I'm doing a talk at the conference uh, about MySQL high availability solutions. It's going to be kind of on this topic, like what are the ways that you can manage master or, or uh, application to database HA? Just what are the tools and, and some of the lists that I mentioned. Um, and it, it's, it's an interesting subject, um, and it kind of depends on who you talk to, whether or not you feel it belongs as part of the software package itself, or should it be something that is, you know, something that is easy to configure and, and, and manipulate in a lot of different ways. Okay, well that brings us to the top of the hour and I know there were a lot of other questions and as I said before, I will make sure that Jay and Alexi get copies of these so that they can do a follow-up blog post um, and answer your questions. And with that said, Jay, Alexi, thank you for a great job today. Audience, thank you for participating. We hope to see you again in a future webinar. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're calling in from. Thank you again.